Never sat in this one before. As Alpha 323 continues its journey towards becoming Star Citizen's biggest life in the verse as we know it patch yet, we know lots of folks have patiently waited to see one thing above all others, the Misk Raptor. What? The Movie Glass and Star Map app. Uh, the Movie Glass and newly christened Map app. Arrival complete. Welcome. So the Moby Glass is getting a massive visual overhaul for 323. The version everyone's been living with for years is, uh, it kind of does the job, but it's, it, you can see it's dated now. So the entire Moby Glass is overhauled from what it was before. It's using a new technology that we've built called cards, and we use cards for other UIs throughout the game. For the Moby Glass, it was a big task to convert because it has a lot of apps in it as well. So we need to convert all of those apps over to the new tech in order for the entire thing to be able to release. So in 3.23, we've got a really big improvement to the user experience. So. Everything's designed to look nicer and feel nicer. Ready to upgrade. And sadly, we haven't really had all the time we needed to get all the apps there. So you are going to recognize the VMA and the comms app just as they have always been. But with that package, you're getting all the other apps with a visual update and also functionality updates for some of them. You've got a completely updated home screen, so you can do things like view your ship, you can see your health, uh, notifications. It's kind of the information you really need to see now. So we're also getting a fully new health app where you can see all the things that's currently affecting your health and all the stats that you would normally see on your HUD. Over time, we've added all these cool new things that can affect the player. So we're going to have things like radiation. We've got existing stuff like you can break bones. If you heal yourself, you can potentially overdose. You can have drug effects. All this cool stuff is happening, but it wasn't obvious to the player just walking around what was going on under the hood. So we added this new app where you can track all that stuff. So the health app is going to be the place to go when for some reason you're feeling ill and you just need that extra little bit of information of what do I need to do to take care of myself to get out of this situation. So the contract manager has been in the game for a long time. And it's just grown kind of obvious that it's not doing all the things you need it to. All the functionality is essentially the same internally, but it needed a visual polish and also the user experience needs bringing up to date. So there's some new features like you can toggle between illegal missions, you can see what the rewards are going to be ahead of time. So no more randomly getting attacked by the police, <laughs> hopefully. It's probably your fault anyway. Some big improvements coming to the Moby Glass. That's coming in 3.23, uh, but one thing we didn't talk about yet was the star map. We've had the, the original star map in Star Citizen for a long time, so it was overdue for an update. Don't get me wrong, like the old Skylink app, it did what it should, but I think it had grown a bit obsolete. No, death to the old star map! <laughs> That's harsh. The original one just showed of the stars and planets and so on, but we wanted to expand on that. So opening up the star map for the first time in 323, you're gonna realize that the star map is not just the star map anymore. It's the everything map. It's now called Maps app rather than star map. And why did we change it? Uh, because we now have the interior map, so this shows like your local area, as well as sort of zooming out and showing the uh, star map. So what is the interior map? It's a bird's eye view of the current environment. It's a really cool 3D map, so instead of just having a top-down view, this is showing you the actual level. And it's presented as a fully schematic 3D view in which you can find every relevant point of interest, such as a shop, transit station, hospital, and the like. You can get them for ships, for landing zones in 323. In future, we'll expand on that and add it to more areas. And if you're not familiar with the location you just arrived to, 
or you're a new player and you're not familiar with any of them, actually having the spatial awareness of where the things that are relevant to you are is going to provide a giant step up in terms of the experience of the game in general. As it's fully 3D, you can move around, navigate between floors, zoom in and out, and so on, as you'd expect. You will see the local area where you're walking around, something you've never been able to do before. Essentially, you'll be able to navigate between all the different rooms and uh, different important areas of the game. It also offers a way to overlay your own data onto it that is specific to you. So, for example, the location of your mission objective. Custom markers. You can also use it to plot a route to another location on the map. Drop a marker and navigate to it, so we'll see a line on the map that shows you where, where you can actually go and where the easiest way to get there. So on that map, you'll be able to just click any room you want to go to. You can go between the different zones of the area and you can place a little marker and route all the way there. So navigating is one of the primary use cases we want to make as robust as we can for 323. And so part of that involves providing a, a variety of fallback cases in order to help you best understand how to get somewhere. So for instance, if we ask the AI system and it can't return you a path via its nav links and nav meshes, uh, we can ask the transit system. Uh, and if the transit system says there's a connection between the two zones, uh, then that would help you route. So at the time of recording, we're having issues loading all the different OCs that's in a big landing zone, for example. So we're looking into these solutions to make sure that you can track from one part to a fully different part of the area. So Star Map. Star Map is vastly improved. The main thing we wanted to change was make it a nice user experience. So everything in there has been overhauled. When you open your map, you'll first of all be confronted with your local area, so you'll see what room you're in and what's close to you. But you can also zoom out and you will see the universe open up in front of you as you zoom out. From here, we can see the entire verse. We can see all the planets. Space stations, Lagrange points, all of that good stuff. You can then click on any of those markers and you will be automatically panned and zoomed into them so you can see a little bit more detail about them. If you've zoomed in on a planet, for example, you can zoom in a little bit more and you can start to see the surface locations. So you can see towns, outposts. You get all the information you need about them. We're adding this new system where you can see all the amenities that are available at that location. So for uh, outposts, landing zones and stations, there will be a section here for amenities, which will show you things like whether you can buy weapons here, whether you can buy ships here, whether there's a food court, whether there's a hospital or a clinic, all of these sorts of things you'll be able to see on those box outs, so you'll know which is the most appropriate location to go to. We showed in Citizen Con, obviously, that these display much better now, so you'll see them uh, rotate with the map, and if they've gone behind the planet, they fade out, and if they're in front of your view, they're brighter, so you can see them more easily. So at the moment, if you zoom in, it will eventually get too big and you'll go through, but I am currently working on it so that it will zoom in to the surface and you'll never actually sort of clip through the planet. And generally, we've tried to make it feel like a much more pleasant user experience, so there's things like items don't disappear off the back of the map anymore, everything's easy to read. So, as always, the star map is what you're going to want to use to route your way through the verse. You can still set routes as you could in the previous version, but there is a little bit more feedback if there is a problem and you can't set a route, whether you don't have enough fuel or whether it's obstructed. It's going to be so easy. It's going to be so intuitive for you to you click the thing and there you get the button to say set route. It doesn't always just have the ability to set a route because you can't always set a route. We will let you know when you can set a route. There are a few things that are new for this new star map that have not been seen in the old star map. The primary one there would be search. So we now have a list of all locations so there'll be a little drop down in your top left corner. If you open that up, you can see the full list of locations ordered by what is closest to you. 
and then you can also type any location and it will appear. So you could type, uh, for example, L1 and all of the Lagrange point ones would uh, appear. So this allows you to a lot more flexibility to finding what you're looking for when it's not as sort of, you know, immediately right there when you're at the current view. So you can go all the way across the solar system to look at something completely different. Star Citizen is a massive systemic game. We've got all this cool stuff going on. We've got multiple players doing things at different times. So we wanted to improve the overall interface from the player to that game world. So a big part of that is the new Moby Glass. Finally, we've gone to this effort uh, to refactor and do the whole Moby Glass hub from scratch. New maps, new applications, everything is using new tech, and we have a much more flexible and robust system for the Moby Glass under the hood. When you're playing Star Citizen, it should be a smooth experience. You shouldn't be stuck trying to find whatever it is you need to find at the moment. We're helping you do that with the new apps, making it easier for you to find your missions or to even just find a place in the verse. Now that we have that framework in place, um, then you know it's kind of the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do with it and how many apps we can develop for it and it's all using new tech, it's clean, it's the way we want it. The other big new feature is obviously the star map with a brand new interior map as well. Star Citizen is a game about exploring. It is a game about spacefaring. And even so, when, even when you're not going around in space, it's still about exploring. Without the star map, it's really difficult to do that, right? This makes it so much easier to navigate around, to finding what you want and where you want, where it is, and how to get there. It, overall, it helps the player interact with the world, get to where they want to, do what they want to do more easily and quickly. Both there. Definitely. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Moby Glass is finally converted over to building blocks in the new card system meaning that Flash, as we know it, has pretty much gone to live on a farm upstate. That the conversion sets the stage for the creation of multiple new apps going forward, and that the new internal map and star map have combined to become simply the map app. Now, of course, remember that all things you see on ISC are a work in progress, and as any player of Evo Cotti or developer alike may tell you, we'll continue to iterate between when you see it here and its upcoming release in Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee, Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Hi, I'm not in this episode, but they told me to show you this.